is that it almost instantly, within three to seven seconds, um, gets absorbed into your bloodstream. So you can, um, what's called titrate, very easily you can take only exactly as much medicine as you need. When you eat it, you have to know what your tolerance to eating is already, what the, what the strength of the cookie or whatever it is that it, it is that you're eating, and it also depends on the state of your digestive system and things like that. Another picture? Uh, okay, sorry. Oh wait. No, that's a good one. I thought the cookies were next. Sir. Oh, no, I don't want to talk too much about cookies, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Why smoking works well? Uh, right. So if you fill a pipe and you know you only need a couple of totes or what I like to do is I roll a joint and I'll have a couple of, if I'm at home, I'll roll a couple of joint, uh, I'll have a couple of totes and put it down in the ashtray, let it go out and carry on with what I'm doing and the next time my back hurts I'll go down and have a couple of more tokes or two or three or however many it takes that time and you don't have to sit and smoke the whole joint. It's very easy to know exactly when you've had enough to smoke. Um, you can just click to the next slide. What's next one? This is a very early picture of um, the start of the club, and it uh, shows that there's just a very few, like three kinds of cookies available there. It's a, it looks like it was at a pretty good time because there's two, um, ten kinds of medicine out, so they were doing pretty good at that point. But before the police raids. Yeah, all right on it. It was before I started working at the club. We have. Um, the medicine, uh, the cookies on its own board, and the medicine under a glass jar. But we'll get in that in next year semester's lecture. Um, <coughs> so I think I do the buyers club lecture at the end of this semester. Okay. So um, to get uh, back to the PID, um, the pelvic inflammatory disease it was extremely debilitating. Um, I couldn't work. Um, it was extremely painful. Cannabis kept me going through that. Um, modern medicine, um, they call it a practice for a reason because they're still learning, which is one of my big um, arguments for not letting us present to modern medicine what we've learned by actually using the cannabis, um, in my case, for over 30 years now and um, um, accepting it as, as scientific evidence. In 19, um, don't take us, um, I had a hysterectomy when I was 25 and not knowing anything about our bodies the way they work as I do now, um, all modern medicine did was remove a symptom and not fix the problem, so my problem moved to my ears because we have all of our holes in our heads are connected to our body organs. So I suffered through six years of chronic ear infections where I wanted to constantly bang my head across on the wall. Um, they had me on morphine tablets because, or else I, wouldn't, I couldn't work, I couldn't get out of bed. And again, the only thing that really saved me was the use of <coughs> cannabis. Morphine just made me feel stupid. I could tell my ears still hurt, but it's sort of like you bumble through your day. Anyway, so eventually I learned that it was food allergies causing my problems, corrected my problems, and um, with my ears being out, managed to get off of eating, just cut myself off of eating morphine, and managed to get back to work. I worked in the hospitals for several years as a long-term care aide. Oh. I switched it too fast. That's okay. What time you got? I have no idea. <laughs> Three forty-five. Three forty-five. Okay, we're doing great. Um, uh, when I was in um, working in the hospitals, um, 
they contracted hepatitis C. It was in 1993, and it was the first case that the doctors had seen in BC. They had no idea what I had. I was in isolation in hospital for um, on an IV for seven days. It was the closest to dying I'd ever been in my life. I was very scared. Um, I was on Salt Spring Island, so there wasn't a lot of doctors available, but my doctor was really good at getting specialists to come and see me. And anytime one came to see somebody else, he'd grab them and make them come and see me. <laughs> it was quick. But nobody had a clue what was going on. It was eight months after. Um, I was recovering at home still. The first three months, I couldn't get out of my pajamas. By eight months, I was able to get dressed and make one meal every other day for my family. My sons at that time were basically looking after me and doing most of the housework and the clean, um, cleaning and the cooking. And um, it was eight months after that they finally tested and um, found that I was positive with hepatitis C. They said I got it at work. They didn't know how, um, other than I just got it at work. So once we finally discovered that, I asked my doctor what that meant. And he said that meant that to the medical profession, that meant that um, within two years I'd have cirrhosis of the liver and, five, and within three years after that I'd be dead. At that point, my sons were about 13 and 15 years old, so I told them that I found that highly unacceptable. And um, went home and started really becoming serious about herbs for the first time in my life. I used them quite a lot, but I um, really seriously started using them because at that point I couldn't eat. Um, Anything that had oil in it would make my liver react. So that kept out grains. I basically had to eat fresh fruits and vegetables. And that was just about all I could eat for a year. And indeed, for two years after that, just the smell of cooking made me want to throw up. And the last thing it did was make me want to eat. And the only way that I indeed I could eat was again by smoking cannabis. Um, another thing that was discovered along the way uh, and had probably been accentuated by the uh, hepatitis C was that I also had environmental illness and extreme chemical allergies for several years. And um, this meant that if I wasn't extremely careful with the cannabis that I ingested, it would make me sick as well. I was. With, um, basically homebound for four, four or five years. I couldn't go out without getting extremely sick. People had perfume on or a house had a carpet in it or a car drove by, anything like that. I'd be sick for another three months again. And one of the things that I did was to start growing all of my own cannabis. I had um, property on Salt Spring that allowed me to do that. And um, with growing my own cannabis, I had all this leaf, and I already knew that I liked cooking with it. I liked the effects um, from eating it in the past, that um, I liked the effects that it had. So I started eating cannabis quite regularly. And when I did that, quite a number of things happened. I started to be able to sleep properly. Um, most of my nausea went away, so.